All right, so for our next assignment, this is assignment six. We are working on uh, logo design skills using a vector program, Illustrator. And I wanted to uh, use this semester to try personal emblems, family crests. In, in Japan, they're called kamon. And in um, Europe, they're called coat of arms. In Game of Thrones, they're called sigils, which have kind of a magical power to them. And you can make this personal. I've chosen to make it, make a personal emblem for my father who, who has passed away recently. And it's going to help me kind of pay tribute to him and his interests. So he was very interested in Japanese culture. He was a European historian, um, especially with the intellectual history of Germany and the symbol of the Weimar Republic was something that was special to him. He loved uh, sword craft and the Kaman was used on the hilts of, of samurai swords. And these are some symbols attributed to rogue samurai, I believe during the Edo period. And I especially liked this butterfly emblem. Uh, he lives in Monterey, California, where they have kind of a monarch uh, habitat. And also a lot of these, these oak leaf, walnut leaf, acorn motifs are things I wanted to be inspired by. The other things, traditional European coat of arms are a helmet and shield with the symbol on the shield with the colors. And this was, um, my, our last name is Fry. This is the Fry coat of arms. So I wanted to incorporate a little bit of that helmet and shield idea, but maybe replace the, the kind of generic lion symbol or, or eagle symbol with something more specific to my father. And you can always add at the bottom of banner. I've chosen not to do that yet. I'm just gonna stick uh, just with the symbol today. So some other references I pulled up. Uh, he was a big collector, especially later in his life, of Rosenthal China, a German-made type of fine porcelain. This is its symbol, which obviously relates to European coat of arms as well. And you can see an example here by a contemporary digital artist, just a second, right here, that combines a lot of those things well. Kind of a Weimar Republics, or, or actually a later, or the double-headed eagle, the German symbol. Um, early Christian symbols is the Chiri uh, to represent the early Roman church and the cross swords being unicorn horns here and the crown, which is like Rosenthal. So taking all those inspirations together, kind of viewing them like this, I've put together my design. Also, instead of a regular medieval helmet, kind of playing more with the samurai helmet. And I've come up with a sketch in my sketchbook that now I will make an image of. So, using FaceTime, just to get a, a camera to come up right away, I'm going to hold up my sketch, even though I have very poor light here. See the magic of Photoshop here. I'm going to hold down Command-Shift-4. Let's try that again. FaceTime, Command Shift 4, that turns my cursor into a little bullseye, which allows me then to draw a box around what I want to copy. Now, if I'm really exact on my sketch, I might end up doing this. I might scan it instead. This will get me started. When I let go, it will take a picture of it, put it to my desktop. What's nice about using FaceTime, especially for logo design, is it takes the, the image as a mirror image. And that's an easy way to tell if there are flaws in your design. And that might be because of the way I was holding the paper. So let me turn off FaceTime there. But ideally, in, in this design, I would have some form of symmet symmetry, like the wings of the eagle. And yet I want it to work both um, in both ways, left and right. So it might be because I was tilting the paper or just because I didn't draw it very cleanly, and it doesn't matter which, I'm gonna show you how we clean it up. So first, right within preview, I just double clicked on the screen grab that I got from FaceTime. I am going to click auto levels. I'm going to desaturate, take the saturation down, maybe not all the way. 
I like a little bit of color in there. And I'm going to sharpen it so it's nice and clear, whatever I drew. And I can play with how bright it goes. Some of those guidelines might be helpful. This won't be my finished logo. This is just a sketch to get me there. Okay. Then I can go up to Tools, and I can flip it horizontally. And this is actually how I sketched it. Now I'm going to close it. Preview will automatically save all of those. And I'm going to open it with Photoshop. Now with Photoshop, I'm going to use a guide, put one right in the middle. Then I'm going to make a copy of my original layer, Command-J, and I'm going to transform it, just like we did with Shape Tools. First thing I'm going to do is line up the middle with my guide. So I have to rotate it, so that crown at the top, the cross kind of in the middle. I want the eye resting right on the side of that middle, that circle. That, that butterfly eye. I want it to go right down the middle of the helmet. Very good. Now I can use guides to see the top of the wings. Yes, those are, are pretty good. The bottom of the wings, not quite as good. The little peaks on the wings. These are all things I want to work on and be aware of. The scoop on the wings. So I'm, I'm working from the outside in thinking about what needs to be symmetrical. So that looks pretty good. And then the width of these scoops. And I have rulers turned on. That's just Command R. So I can see, okay, it's about a little more than two inches out for that scoop. And then it's a little bit more than two inches out for that scoop. So that scoop should probably come in a little. And notice how that inside of the scoop goes right to the outside of that wing. This one needs to come out a little bit more. So on and on. So what can I do? I can now hit um, Command-J to duplicate it again. You'll see my steps. Now I'm going to do Command-T, and I'm going to play with Skew. Skew is a really great tool. We haven't used it much. Just to isolate and work with one corner at a time. Pulling it up or down, getting things off center or on center kind of tweak it in really small amounts. I know I need to pull this bottom out. And that works, but then also this in a little bit. So that it works with my guides. And I have to pull this over so that my center line is still lined up. Now I've scooped that a little bit further just so I have room for all of this detail. The needles, I have multiple needles here for the Rosenthal logo influence. And then the samurai helmet, and I have a little uh, walnut leaf or oak leaf design here to kind of end the mask. And then the butterfly, and the branches, and the coils, and the opening of the, the Weimar Republic eagle. These will just be all solid black. So I kind of see where my challenges are. My hook is not where I want it. So this is the next trick. And this is something we can do in Illustrator as well. But first, let's try to make it work in my sketch. So I'm going to steal the hook from this side. Steal all these components. Duplicate it. Transform it. It's on a new layer now. Flip it horizontally. Don't distort it at all. Hold down shift so it stays in place and bring it where I need it on this side. Very good. And that's going to help me work everything out because now I know that those two ends are symmetrical. I don't mind my logos being a little handmade looking, um, but I do want that outside shape to just be locked in. All right, so once I have that, I can hold down Option and then do Layer Merge Visible to get everything on one flat layer on the top. And let's go through that process of what I've done now. So I started with this, just cleaned up from preview right from the FaceTime and then flipped. I rotated it on a center line. I played with distort, or I'm sorry, skew 
if you need a more powerful tool than SKU that gives you a multiple access control without warping it, uh, then you use distort. And then I just flipped to get the, the, the wing in the place I want it, and then I merged it all into one layer. Now that's merged all on one layer, I can hit command um, semicolon to get rid of my guides, and I go to image adjustments levels, and I'm going to clean it up a little bit more. It's okay if it's really faint. But this is what I'll bring into Illustrator to trace. Now, I don't want it too thick. You know, That might look kind of cool as like a woodblock print, but I want it as a nice thin guide so I can decide where all my edges need to be. But I don't want to lose information like that edge necessarily. But I'm trying to get rid of all the debris here. And this is challenging when you're working from just a, a screen grab in bad light. But it's important to the creative process. So if that still gives you a lot of debris that's annoying, that's, that's okay. It's not the finished product. Okay, now I'm going to take this and I'm going to say File. And I'm going to save this as my sketch. So this will be the first thing we upload. Though I won't take the time to upload it right now. So Carl Fry Assignment 6 Sketch. So I'm not just uploading a photo of my, for this project, of my um, sketchbook. I'm trying to upload the, the cleaned and refined photo of my sketchbook. <laughs> and that will show the workflow a little bit better. We'll show this, then we'll show our black and white logo that's finished in Illustrator, and then we'll show our color logo, which we can finish either in Illustrator or in Photoshop, as long as we have the black and white vector done in Illustrator. Okay, now I can close this. So now I've got my good start, and I don't need Photoshop anymore for a little while. Now I can keep all my reference open, but I, I have it all in a folder. I know where it is. Different ideas, different approaches. It's all going to be in here, and I'll use it if I need it. But right now, what I really need is my sketch. Okay, now I'm going to open up Illustrator. And instead of opening my sketch in Illustrator, I'm just going to open up Illustrator as it is and open up a new print document. Because we want to have full capability. File, new, I'm going to call this Carl, assignment 6, BW for black and white. Um, family crest, no, I'll call this, let's see, come on, for Phil Fry, my father. You say, okay, don't worry about the point. It's just going to be a letter size, what's called an artboard. But because it's a vector program, size doesn't matter. There's no pixel resolution that matters here. Now I want to bring in my sketch just by dragging and dropping it onto the field. And I can hold down shift and kind of center it within the artboard. This is going to be my and hit, re I don't even need to hit return actually, and just click off of it. And now that's going to be my sketch layer. If it's too dark, we can play with the opacity of it. But right now I'm just gonna lock it and then make a new layer. I'm under layers here, a new layer on top of it. All right, so the tools we have to trace over the top of this. We've talked a little bit about the pen tool, and that can give me exact curves and shapes. So that might be good for the, these wings, to get them really exact. And then you can modify. 
right? 